Good to see everybody this morning. Oh, um, I, I definitely love singing that song. Just my adoration for Jesus is very real for many reasons, tons of reasons. Uh, but quite honestly, this morning, uh, the reason why I'm so grateful for Jesus and what he's done in my life as a 20-something-year-old guy, turning my life around, but he, he, was, he, he allowed me to meet an incredible woman, and she chose to marry me, and today is our 23rd anniversary. So Christy and I are married 23 years, and uh, it gets better every year. Got me a great woman. She even surprised me and took me to the Maxwell concert. Oh, yes. If you're under 30, you don't know who Maxwell is. That's okay. But if you're over 30, you know, you, know the, you know the vibe I'm talking about, right? Yeah. So, and he's still cool. He still got it. It was a good concert. So, uh, we had a great time. Love, love it. Uh, but y'all aren't here to hear about my personal life and about, you know, the concerts I've been going to. Uh, we're here to celebrate Jesus for sure. And um, I'm going to read a passage to you today. It's kind of our main passage. It's a short message today. It's not a long one. Uh, and we'll have the Lord's Supper afterward. But the passage I'm choosing, you're going to be like, dude, that is not a Christmas passage. You, you're, you're, you've gone off script, okay? And you, you're going rogue on us, Jeff. What's your problem? Because it's not going to sound very Christmassy. But, but it is if you just stick with me. Don't doubt my Christmasness. I am, I'm, 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 you know what I'm saying? Is that, that's real. You, you want to see that one more time? There you go. So I, I'm, in the, I'm in the Christmas spirit. So don't doubt me when, you, when we read this passage together. It, it doesn't initially sound very Christmassy. But we have to remember that this is a time of year where we remember how, how Jesus really arrived in our time and space, right? And, and that word, that, the, the, there's a word called Advent. This, this time of year is celebrated all over the world. And Advent, and that word means arrival. And it is, it is a looking back to when Jesus arrived because that is something that Christians need to be good at. We need to commemorate the big faith moments in our story so that we can be anchored and not get swept away with all the madness that's going on in our world. But we are connected to stuff that really happened in real time, in real place. And, and, and that's why Advent, I think, it can be a helpful time for you to just take the time to remember the arrival of Jesus and what that was all about. And, uh, and, and the cool thing is, Early on, uh, Advent was celebrated really looking back. And then at some point in history, it, it took a double meaning. And it began to also mean to really think ahead about the next time Jesus arrives again. And so those are two concepts that can really help you this time of year. Uh, not just this time of year, but at all time. So I'm going to read the passage. They told me to preach in my robe. I was like, you know... I don't think I could pull it off today, you know what I'm saying? And so, but maybe another day I might bust out the robe and preach from it. So y'all, y'all, y'all be ready for that. You know, are you, re are you ready? Okay, so <clears throat> we're going to go Luke chapter 3, beginning in verse 1. In the 15th year of the reign of Emperor Tiberius, when Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea, and Herod was ruler of Galilee, and his brother Philip, ruler of the region of Iturea and Trachonitis, and Lysanias, ruler of Abilene, during the high priesthood of Annas and Caiaphas, the word of God came to John, son of Zechariah, in the wilderness. We'll stop there for right now. Jeff, what are you talking about? That is so, that is boring. I, when I read this, I just skip over it because this is pointless. <laughs> Well, just hold on. Luke is, Luke is including this for a reason. Okay? And, and this actually is one of the passages that is read during the season of Advent. Okay? And the reason is, you need to realize Luke is saying to his audience, they know who Emperor Tiberius is. Okay? And you know what his rule was kind of known for? He did a lot of good things administratively, but at some point he checked out. And he actually decided to leave and go to an island. He went to the island of Capri and just hung out there and kind of tried to, and gave the, the kind of rulership to another guy. So he's on this island and he was doing some really shady stuff. Like 
Roman style shadiness, you know what I mean? It's a mixed crowd, so you know what I'm saying. It was, he was known for just being really, whoa, what is going on on that island? And the dude he left in charge tried to take over and he ended up having to get killed, executed for treason. So that was going on politically. So when Luke writes the emperor, Tiberius, people go, yeah, yeah that's, that's crazy time. Pontius Pilate, ever heard of him? Yeah. Pontius Pilate, you th it, it didn't just start with Jesus. There was some stuff that happened before he interacted with Jesus that wasn't good. And that was one of the reasons he was kind of afraid to, he didn't know what to do because he'd messed up before. He was not well liked. Really not by too many. We know Herod, Herod, that fox, I mean, just, oh, there's so many bad rulers. And so you look and you go, what is Luke trying to say? He goes, yeah, there was political chaos going on. Can anyone relate to political chaos? Right? Because one day, 100 years from now, if Jesus hadn't come back or more, people will look back and go, but what was going on back in the United States of America back in then? This, was, this is stuff that was going on. And then you look at what else is happening. You got the promised land. You got the people finally in the promised land. They're, 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 they're there. But what's wrong? You, you, yeah, this guy's over this region. This guy's over that region. You know what's wrong? Is a foreign army has come in an, another empire, taking your land, and then dividing it up amongst themselves, putting people in charge they want to be in charge. Imagine if that happened in this country. Some other foreign power take over this country. Oh, yeah, Tennessee and Georgia, we'll give it to this, my cousin. I'm going to let him rule over there. Just craziness. So the people are feeling like, man, our, our, our government is jacked up. They, they, they've jacked up our land. We don't even have control over where we live, and they're taxing us like crazy. And not only is the political situation bad, you find out that there's two high priests. They ain't supposed to be two high priests. Luke put that in there for a reason. Why are there two high priests? High priest means only one. There's two. Why? Because the Romans came in and said, you know, I'm going to take, I'm going to take Annas out. I'm going to put another person in. Caiaphas. So you got the Romans meddling into their religious life. This was a dark time in real history. And so what are we supposed to do with this? Luke is saying, I'm just painting a picture. Remember that time? Yeah, this is the time. But guess what? Guess what? Are you supposed to despair? No, because the word of God came to John. God's word still came to someone who was willing to speak God's word into the political chaos, into the religious chaos. God's word arrived, and therefore we can have hope and we can have joy. And what was that message, right? You go, oh yeah, it was a, you know, a message of joy. But what does he say? In verse 3, he went around into all the region of Judea, Jordan proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. As it is written in the book of the words of the prophet Isaiah, the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. Every valley shall be filled and every mountain and hill shall be made low and the crooked shall be made straight and the rough made smooth and all flesh, all flesh shall see the salvation of the Lord. The salvation, the rescue, the deliverance. That's what that word means. That's what God does. When it looks bleak, when it looks dark, don't worry about it. God is still going to interact and he's going to break through into our history. We think everything is so important. Our political situation is so stark. It's so crazy. The Supreme Court and this and that. And we're just running around crazy and the markets are crashing. This and that. And you're so flipping around and you don't realize God has got this. He arrived at a just as crazy time. And he dealt with stuff. But it takes people that are willing to repent, hey, change your life, admit your junk, admit your sins, turn yourself in, and, just, and, and receive that baptism in that new life. And that forgiveness. Get out of that water with newness of life. That was the message. That was the message that John preached. And then Jesus came right after him and preached the same thing. And then when Jesus went up, guess what the church was preaching? The same thing. Repent. Get your sins forgiven. Get that joy of a new life. You don't have to be anchored in the chaos that is in your world. There's always chaos in the world. But the word of God, the word of God still 
acts, moves, changes people's hearts, changes their lives. And that's the God that we serve today. And that is the source of joy. That is the source of joy. Don't get distracted about the craziness and the chaos. Remember the word of the Lord. And Jesus was the word in the flesh, you know, amen. And so what we're going to do, I'm going to say a prayer. We're going to take the Lord's Supper together, and we will continue to worship God. Let's pray. Father, we are grateful for this opportunity. We are grateful that when we pray, we're not just saying words that just go up to the ceiling and fall down. We, we just know that you are real. You exist, Father. And you have, you have broken into human history in unique ways with Mary carrying Jesus in her womb. A young woman, he comes out a little baby, but grows and teaches and preaches and dies and raises again and is coming back. We look back to that moment when he came and we look ahead to when he arrives again. Help us through the chaos, Lord. Help us not to be people that are anxious and flying around all freaked out about the way the world is, but help us know that you are real and you interact with this life. Thank you for Jesus and his life. We take this bread that represents his body. We take this juice that represents the blood that he shed. We take it into our bodies and we remember Jesus and we can't wait for his arrival again. It's in his name we pray. Amen.